today I have something very special to show you, something that I've just discovered uh, and just really uh, started playing around with and messing around with and that is the Olympus, the remarkable Olympus OM1 and OM2. And here they are, they are very very beautiful little things. Uh, we've got a silver OM1 here and we've got a black OM2 here. Um, what's the difference between these? Well it's pretty simple. Uh, the OM1 is a manual camera. It has a built-in light meter which appears in the viewfinder so you um, you frame a shot and uh, according to what the light meter is telling you as you're looking through the viewfinder you simply um, change the shutter speed and aperture according to uh, what the meter tells you. You can use it with an external meter or you can use it with uh, the Sony 16 rule. Entirely manual little SLR. The OM2 which we've got here, this is a black version uh, you can use it either as a manual camera or you can use it as an aperture priority auto exposure camera. So this, the OM2, has auto exposure as well as being entirely manual should you wish to use it that way. So it's very simple to change between the two modes. On the top there we've got uh, a switch and it switches between off manual so there it's an entirely manual camera and then we've got the auto setting uh, which allows you to use it in aperture, aperture priority mode and then on the on this side here we've got a an exposure compensation so we've got two stops either way you can go up two stops or down two stops uh, and that's pretty a pretty handy feature. Looking at the OM1, we've got a similar arrangement, except there is no uh, aperture priority here. We've simply got an off and an on switch. And as soon as you turn it on, the uh, meter becomes active, and uh, you can shoot using the light meter. Or if you know about light, you can use Sony 16 pretty easily. You just keep it off. Sometimes the meters in these fail. It is a reasonably common thing for a, an OM1 or an OM2 meter to fail. Uh, it's not that common, but it does happen. Um, but certainly with the OM1, you can use it. If that happens, just use it as a manual camera with an external light meter, perhaps. And the same uh, you can do with this one also. So. In use, um, the, the, these cameras are a little unusual in that the shutter speed ring is here, right next to the lens. I don't know if you can see those uh, symbols there. Those are all the shutter speeds around there. So what you do is, in use, use a hand. There are a couple of tabs. So there are a couple of tabs there that you can move it by. And to change the shutter speeds, you just move that dial. So unlike the Russian cameras, there's no problem changing shutter speeds when uh, uh, before you've cocked the shutter, you can change the speeds at any time. The OM2 is exactly the same. It has the shutter speeds here at the back. Uh, shutter speeds on these run from uh, one second to one thousandth of a second. And there's also a B setting. So we've got the full range of shutter speeds. Aperture is right at the front of the lens, old school style, which I personally rather like. That aperture will move uh, just as you want it to, to select the correct setting. Let's open the back. To open the back, standard procedure for an SLR lift up the rewind knob and there we are 
and you will see that what we have there is in fact a Leica style cloth shutter. Now I don't know whether this mechanism is similar to the Leica mechanism in any way. Uh, I do know that all the workings for the shutter, um, certainly for the speeds, are all down in the bottom of the camera here. If you take off the bottom plate you'll be able to see those, but it's a, a standard Leica style cloth shutter, so we cock the shutter, you can see the blinds moving there. And there it goes. A very reliable shutter is this kind of shutter. Um, the cloth doesn't seem to deteriorate on these cameras, at least not that I've known. Uh, loading's very simple, uh, very simple indeed. All you do to load is pop your cartridge in here, bring it across here and drop it into this cutout which has a little claw on it uh, and it will drag the film across. So if you move the lever it will then drag the film across and you're loaded. Light seals often, uh, well I don't know about often, always corrode or turn to jelly on these cameras. Uh, and so you, if you get one, you may well have to replace the light seals. The light seals run across this channel here, over to the other side, and across this channel here, over to the other side, and they seal the door against light. And then there's also a seal right here, nice and simple to do. And the way you do these is you can either get a, um, a kit to do it with everything pre-cut, or you can just get a sheet of light seal material, as I did, uh, cut it roughly to size, and pop it in there. So that's what I've done with both these cameras, is replace the light seals. So, lenses. There are a wide array of lenses for these cameras. Let's see what we've got on here. Right, first up we've got the one that's mounted on the OM-1, which I don't know if you can see here, is a 1.4 maximum aperture lens. And it's just beautiful, it's just beautiful. It takes the most stunning images. Um, personally, whenever I'm photographing, I always use maximum aperture. Uh, because I love the depth of field effect, the um, the uh, what what's the word that people use today is bokeh or bokeh or something of that sort. This lens gives beautiful uh, out of focus areas. It, it, it's really a fantastic lens. Of course, shooting at f one point four. Um, you've got very, very narrow depth of field, so you do have to be spot on with focusing. Um, but focusing with these cameras is very nice and easy. Most of them have um, a screen that with, with uh, in the centre a little uh, sort of prism and ground glass and, and, and a little rangefinder section. So, so you've got three ways with most of these viewfinders of uh, actually getting accurate focus. So it's not really a problem. Manual focus, of course, we've got the rubber ring uh, which has a nice grip on it on the Olympus cameras, the Olympus lenses. Very simple to turn, the grease doesn't seem to go dry on these lenses. They do occasionally get a little bit of dust inside them and if they've been kept really badly they get fungus. If you've got fungus, a bit of a problem. Uh, dust isn't really a problem. Any any lens that's you know of the age that these lenses are is going to have some dust in them. In my experience, it doesn't affect image quality at all. Probably technically it does, and if you measured it on I don't know some sort of resolution chart, you might find a, a, a tiny difference from new. Um, but I've never noticed any real uh, problem with. A little bit of dust in a lens. 
Um, we've got on the OM2, we've got this very nice wide angle. This is a 28 mil. Um, the aperture is 3.5 on this lens. Um, so you're not going to get lots of shallow depth of field with it unless you're very close to your subject. Um, but then wide angle, you're perhaps we could say you're unlikely to be that close to your subject anyway if, if, if you're shooting with a wide angle lens. It's a very, very nice lens. There was, or is, I should say, another 28 mil for the for the OM series. Uh, that's a 2.8, which gives you another stop. So obviously you'll get a little more shallow depth of field effect um, with the 2.8. But for all practical purposes, the 3.5 is fine. And it is a lovely lens. It's really sharp. The Olympus lenses render colours really, really nicely. And they're, they're just beautiful. They're just beautiful. The lenses are small. You can see how tiny those lenses are. Even the 1.4 is pretty shallow. It's what? Just over an inch, maybe an inch and a half long. This one is very slightly over an inch long, the 28 mil. Um, so they're compact uh, and they really are really high quality lenses. Beautiful, beautiful optics. There's a black finish, as you can see. OM1s and OM2s were made in black finish. They were also made in silver finish. Which one is nicest, black or silver? Well, obviously that's going to be down to your either personal choice or simply what you can find around. Um, I used to prefer the black version and I did look quite hard to find a black version. Um, and I still like the black version. It seems a little smaller and it's less conspicuous and as I understand it, they were often used by press people, press photographers, um, who wanted to be that bit less conspicuous when they're waving their SLRs in people's faces. It's entirely personal choice. I do like the black version, but I've come more and more to, to like the silver version. Um, it just has that polished, technical, machined feel that, that the black one is perhaps um, lacking a little bit. But of course, it's personal choice. Um, now let's compare to something that uh, that I call a standard for size, for camera size, and that is the beautiful old, lovely old little Leica 3. And this is a Barnett Leica, as you know, this is featured in uh, several of my videos. So this is one of the smallest cameras you can get. Still to this day, it's a very small camera, whether you're talking film or digital. So let's just compare size. Well, they look pretty much identical. You can see that perhaps the Leica is slightly smaller by a matter of millimetres. Slightly smaller, perhaps three or four millimetres less wide. Um, but we're still, certainly with the OM-1 and the OM-2, we're still in the range of very small cameras, which is a good thing. SLRs, in my opinion, can get very big, very bulky. Uh, certainly digital SLRs can get extremely big and bulky. Um, and in my view, for what it's worth, a smaller is always better. We compare height, the top deck of the Leica is lower, making it feel smaller. So we've got about, what's that, maybe a centimetre, just about a centimetre's difference between the two top decks. Um, so it's really, uh, it is slightly bigger in that regard. And of course, the Olympus has uh, 
miraculously packed into this tiny housing, a little pentaprism and a mirror swinging about and all the SLR bits that you need to make an SLR work properly. Um, and so it's almost inevitable that it's going to be a little bit taller uh, than the Leica, but still uh, it's it's very short. Let's turn it around and when you see the rangefinder housing of the Leica you can see it actually protrudes slightly over the top of the OM-1's top deck. It's very very nearly the same size. It does protrude slightly. It is very very slightly taller than the top deck of the OM-1 uh, at the point of the rangefinder housing. But it is a very small camera. In fact, it's it's got such a beauty and such a purity and such a compactness and, and, and just altogether um, small package that it's sometimes referred to as a Leica M1 SLR or a Leica M SLR. Um, it clearly isn't a Leica SLR, but, but you get the idea because it's very small, because it's very compact, it's very simple, it's very pure, um, and it has this Leica style cloth shutter. It is sometimes seen uh, in that light. The quality of these cameras is astonishing. They are beautifully made. This one dates from about 1972. This one, I think, from about 1978 or thereabouts, perhaps later. I could be wrong. But they're both about, I don't know, 40 years old. And they work perfectly. The meters work, the shutters work, the lenses are fine. Everything works as it should. There's a little bit of dust inside the pentaprism housing in, in both of them. Uh, that can be cleaned by removing the top deck. It's a relatively simple matter to do. Like all camera repairs, you have to know what you're doing, but it is a reasonably simple repair to do uh, if you have even a little confidence in, in camera repairs. As regards price, these are bargains. Um, they are around about £100 for a good one. I should say between 100 to £120 for a good one. That will probably need the light seals fixing, but that again is a simple job. You don't need any mechanical knowledge, you just need a bit of patience. A really, really nice one, serviced, new light seals, everything nice as it should be, will go for around, I don't know, 120 upwards. You might end up paying something like £180, £190 for one of these. Um, that's really been looked after, serviced and is in absolutely top-notch order. Uh, but if you just want one to use, um, pay around £100 to £120 and, and you won't go too far wrong, I wouldn't think. So there we are. Beautiful little cameras, all mechanical, very little electronics. Um, Auto exposure, aperture, aperture priority auto exposure in the OM2 should you want that. I, I do like aperture priority myself, um, so that would be a, a factor that might sway me. Um, all manual is perfectly easy to use if you understand even a little bit about light and study the instruction manual. It is very easy, very simple to use with that built-in meter. So a very high quality SLR, one step up from the likes of the OM10s or the Chinon cameras, um, but a very, very worthy step up. Um, get one of these. If you get one of these, you will not be disappointed. Thanks very much for watching as always. And uh, see you next time. Thank you. Mm -hmm.